There's an article up at Infowars.com that just went up in the last 30 minutes that shook me up quite a bit because I, I've seen this told so many times personally, but also uh, I've seen it admitted to by people like Private Gruckheimer. Back in 2003, he came back from Afghanistan and was talking about how they would go into villages and kill every man, woman, and child. And then the Army came out and clarified uh, on Fox News and said, well, that's true, but only in certain villages uh, do we kill everybody. And, and they tell them, they say, give up or we're going to kill everyone, including your children, which just makes people fight that much harder. And, and it shows who the military is. And they're glad that there's record suicides because that just gets rid of the guys with consciences. And then the evil ones get to be your police chief. So and this is a sifting process. They, the globalists admit they use wars. And we'll actually punch up on screen for folks the article that's up on Infowars.com because I want to show this young man to people uh, and uh, get into what exactly happened to him. But he committed suicide, and I wish he wouldn't have done that. I wish he would have committed his life to saving the unborn, uh, committed his life to exposing the globalist. Uh, but for a lot of people, it's just too painful, uh, and they kill themselves. And, I, I, you know, I don't blame them, um, but it, it, it's, it's better to, to repent uh, and then to say that you're going you're gonna to equalize it. And that's the real answer. Uh, again, Saul of Tarsus killed hundreds of Christians and had them fed to the lions, tortured them to death. But then he became one of the you know, great people to stand up for humanity out of that. And that's what you need to do. Like, do not commit suicide. I don't judge you for it. But you need to understand that your soul says you did bad. You need to make it right. By speaking out against it. Let's go over this article here. Iraq vet kills himself. This is up on Infowars.com. I want to ask you all to get this out to everybody. Look at his beautiful fiance. Beautiful model, you know, blonde chick, the whole nine yards. Uh, Well-to-do family. Had the whole, everything ahead of him. And he joined the military to fight what he believed was Al-Qaeda. And, well, he found out who Al-Qaeda really is. Remember Norman Schwarzkopf, the rest of his life would just break down crying because he knew he nerve-gassed his own troops. They'd say, oh, he's crying. He's such a good guy. Uh, he was crying for guilt. Iraq vet kills himself. Uh, Schwarzkopf would break down crying if somebody told him what a great job he did, what a hero he was. Because it would bring up, it's like guys I've talked to who feel bad when they drive by an abortuary where they paid to have one of their children killed. Years later when they know it was wrong, they, they drive by and have this incredible guilt and think about suicide. Well, why not go and save children? Why not make it right? In God's eye and everybody else's and save the innocent. Why not adopt children? Why not find, they, have, they have groups where poor people can have their children adopted. Women, they're going to have abortions. Why not reverse it? Why not do good? Why not commit your life? The people are so afraid of socially saying no to the new old order, they just kill themselves. Why not, why not be such a thorn in the new old order side they are forced to kill you? How about we make the enemy pay? How about we take the country back and put them on trial? How about they die once they've had a jury of their peers? How about you don't die? How about I don't die? How about they die? And I don't even look forward to that. I just want to stop it. Let's read what he wrote here. Iraq War veteran Daniel Somers committed suicide following an arduous battle with post-traumatic stress disorder. By the way, you don't get it as bad if you were doing the right thing. That's been proven. If you believe it was a just war, then it's different. That was caused by his role... People are committing suicide because they don't like being bullies, folks. They think back to what they did. In his role committing crimes against humanity, that's a quote, according to the soldier's suicide note. Somers was assigned to the technical human intelligence team in Baghdad, which saw him involved in more than 400 combat missions as a machine gunner in the turret of a Humvee, in addition to his role in conducting interrogations. What were they doing? Gun confiscations, torture, you name it. About people who weren't Al-Qaeda, folks. They were the opposite. They were Shiites trying to defend their country. Somer's suicide note is a powerful indictment of the invasion of Iraq and how it ruined the lives of both countless millions of Iraqis as well as innumerable U.S. troops sent in to do the dirty work of the military-industrial complex. When I come back, I'm going to read to you what he said he did. And, folks, it's kill whole families. And let me tell you when, you, when you shoot up a house and blow little kids in half for no reason... You will do one of three things. 
one of three things. I'm going to tell you what those three things are right after this quick break. Read the story, InfoWars.com. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at InfoWars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show. All right, your calls again are coming up. I need to finish up with a few top stories uh, before I do that, then we'll go back into news. So Iraq vet kills himself after being ordered to commit war crimes. Why are U.S. troops, active duty troops, killing themselves at over sevenfold any previous record, previous record end of the Vietnam War? Why are they doing it? It's a cocktail of reasons. Uh, they're putting them on Prozac type serotonin reuptake inhibitors that say on the insert, make you commit suicide. Why are they going psycho and killing people? It says it does that. Don't give it to people that are under stress. I mean, it says it on the insert. It's like a pancake box says this makes pancakes. Serotonin reuptake inhibitors make crazy people. But that's good. It makes the public go more crazy. Now mental health gets more money. Problem, reaction, solution. But for a lot of these people that come from good families and good upbringings, they get in the peer pressure and they do all this stuff. <clears throat> and let me tell you, folks, your brain says kill yourself. <clears throat> You're bad for humanity. Now, people that don't, they get promoted into the CIA and they get to put, you know, bombs under the car of Rolling Stone reporters. Or they get to go into white slavery rings and you know, it's, it's all fun for them. It's a great, great new future. <laughs> and we're taught bow down to them. So nobody stands in their way. But uh, continuing, Somers' suicide note is a powerful indictment of the invasion of Iraq and how it ruined the lives of both Countless millions of Iraqis, as well as innumerable U.S. troops, sent in to do the dirty work of the military-industrial complex. And remember, it's a death sentence to use DU weapons. You're all dead already. You're going to die earlier because of this. You're going to have deformed kids. What are you, four times more likely as a U.S. service person to have deformed kids? And they tie in all the people that haven't even been in country? Why would the elite do that? Because they're into death. The worst of the worst get into power now. It's a sacrament to their God to do this, folks. Now, now, let's read what he had to say in his suicide note. The simple truth is, during my first deployment, I was made to participate in things, the enormity of which is hard to describe. Oh, we know. Going into somebody's house and killing their baby. Just don't get caught. War crimes, crimes against humanity, he wrote. Though I did not participate willingly and made what I thought was the best effort to stop these events, there are some things that a person simply cannot come back from. Oh, yeah, we know what they did. I don't know if his unit did that, but let's just say there's a lot of people like to rape kids. I take some pride in that actually, this is very powerful what he says, I take some pride in that actually as to move on in life after being part of such a thing could be the mark of a sociopath in my mind. So he goes on to say that, you know, you can't come back from something like this, and I'm not a sociopath. These things go far beyond what most are even aware of. Well, yeah, you're not in the club unless you, unless you uh, like to kill babies. Let's continue. Uh, up close, though. Uh, Somers' death. Somers also complains about how he was forced to participate in the ensuing cover-up. Yeah, Pat Tillman didn't like that too much either, so you know what they did to him. Somers' death serves to refocus attention on the fact that the military veterans are committing suicide in droves after being afflicted with PTSD. That's just a cover for it, folks. They're afflicted with conscience as a direct result of committing atrocities while in combat. As Somers highlights in his note, 22, million, 22 military veterans commit suicide every day. Amongst active duty soldiers, more than one a day commit suicide a figure that surpassed the number of U.S. troops killed in combat in Afghanistan. And according to some experts, the military may be un undercounting the problem because of the way it calculates the suicide rate, reports the New York Times. Examples of atrocities 
add directly or indirectly by U.S. troops in Iraq include. Let's go over these. Orders to slaughter all military-age men during some operations. Torturing detainees, many of whom have never engaged in combat and were totally innocent. At grisly prison camps across the country. Raping and torturing children at the infamous Abu Ghraib detention facility while they shrieked in terror. Yeah, with battery acid. They raped them with battery acid, I should add. Women forced to watch later begged to be killed. Sodomizing detainees with chemical lights and broomsticks. Well, they ought to get a job on the New York PD or the Chicago PD. It's a new article about the cops sodomizing innocent people with, with uh, rifles. Indiscriminately firing upon and killing journalists and children. What do you mean? They killed Reuters journalists? They ordered them. Aim the tank at, that journal, at the journalist building? Kill the Reuters reporters. Massacring entire groups of unarmed Iraqis, including children and the elderly. This is what brought me to my actual final mission. Not suicide, but a mercy killing, wrote Somers, adding that him living any kind of ordinary life is an insult to those who died at my hands. Read Summers, Summers' full Suicide Night Below, obtained by Gawker and published with his family's permission. I want his family on. Well, I got I to gotta say that I, I know why he did what he did, but I wish I could have talked to him before he killed himself. Because I've got a mission for you. i got a mission for you. Don't, don't kill yourself and take the easy way out. Commit yourself to fight evil. But I do respect what you did. But it's wrong to see men that have conscience kill themselves while the people that gave the orders and run the whole stinking mess move forward. And they're not just killing the Iraqis, folks. They, they take people's children and they brain damage them by design. They know full well the vaccines are brain damaging. They're designed to do it. We have a government, thousands of declassified operations, Nerve gassing, bioweaponing, chemical weaponing, all of it. U.S. towns and cities in test. Just to see if they can get groups to do it. This is their religion. This is what they're into. Our government is occupied by the globalist. And the only reason I'm still alive is because of the fact that they know if they kill me, what I've said is so true and so hardcore accurate that it will only magnify everything I've done. And they still may kill me. And I talk a lot about that because I want you to understand if they do kill me, I'm willing to do this. I'm more than willing. This is a great honor. And I don't understand why these people are killing themselves. You need to ask God to give you A comfort so you're no longer in pain over this but to give you a drive and a passion you know let's say summers let's say you killed in 400 missions let's say you killed 10 children probably more than that let's say you watched as they you know raped and tortured women and you know did the type of things they do to them it's unspeakable because the worst in the group always leads Let's say you witnessed all that. I mean, you say you, you witnessed things like that. Why don't you go and hand out literature in front of abortion clinics uh, explaining that there are groups and organizations. You see those billboards up all over the country? That's just one group that says, uh, you know, abortion, thinking about abortion, pregnant, thinking about abortion. There, there, there is help. There are options. And there are Christian groups that will pay for you to have a nice place while you have the baby and money after. Because they know there's more people wanting kids, black, white, and that was, oh, nobody wants the black babies. That's not true. I want to make sure the black babies die. There are people lined up around the block to take care of people. And they're, and they're ready to pay you not to go have some dirty $500 abortion, you know, where it doubles your chances of ovarian and, 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 and other cancers. No, they're, they're going to tell you at Planned Parenthood, that's run by eugenicists on record, that that's waiting. You can go and... Just like Ebenezer Scrooge, I want every member of the military out there that's been involved in evil and who has a soul and is tortured about it. You think you're going to get out of this easy? I, I, God's not going to let you get out of this easy. Don't be a coward.
You, you don't blow your head off. That's easy to do. I respect your decisions when you make it, but it's wrong. You have a job to do, just like Ebenezer Scrooge. You've got to counterbalance everything you've done. You've got to go out and help people. You've got to go out and help people not commit abortions. You've got to go out and go join the Salvation Army, one of the only few good charities left out there, and go dedicate your whole life to helping people. That's what we have to do. You should go down and warn every person you meet that fluoride is going to brain damage them and massively hurt their children. When I see people, we all just calmly sit there drinking iced tea with fluoride water in Austin, and we all just calmly do it because we're just accepting it and the cell phone radiation and all the rest of it. We've got to go out and help people and warn people. And you're going to find that once you start doing it, you're not counterbalancing anything. Once you make that change in your heart, you're going to be forgiven by God. And all that you're going to be given after that is the total commitment, and you're going to be serving a mission you were born to serve. That's why you joined, you believe the lie, you were going to fight for good when America is captured by a group that makes Hitler look tame in their sophistication. But now you need to join the real army. There's a reason they want you dead. There's a reason they want to give you vaccines and damage you. There's a reason they say veterans are the number one terror threat. Because they know that you know what you did was wrong. They know that you are struggling if you have a conscience. And they know you could be turned towards good fully. And once that self-powering engine turns on, you will be a great leader. But you've got to ask God a simple prayer to lead God and direct you and to overtake your entire body, mind, and soul. You have to say, I, under free will, turn myself over to God to be good. I turn myself over now. Don't let the human, don't let the flesh in you think that you've got to figure out how it's going to happen. The doors will open. You've got to say, I've been bad. I repent. Wash me clean. Help me. The reason the Christian churches are dying and falling apart is because they don't tell you the rest of the story to go out and wake people up and go out and help people. They tell you, just feel good and stay here and worship the government. That's a government-run church, even though the preacher may be a good man. You have to ask God to throw you against the enemy. And then God will do it. If you ask God, use me, Against these evil people, God will rise you up, will raise you up. It may be small things. It may be taking care of your children. It may be not fighting with your wife. It may be just simply helping your neighbors out. Just not committing suicide defeats the new world order. And if you turn your face towards God, I talked to so many of these soldiers that are planning to commit suicide, and they just say, I don't believe in God. There's no way God would allow things like this to happen. We allowed this to happen. We were given free will, and we decided to serve evil. We decided to believe the deceptions. So stop committing suicide and stop destroying yourselves. Stop killing yourselves, you know, drinking a bottle of whiskey every night. And I'm not judging you. All of us can get better, and we've got to do it together because the New World Order doesn't have any conscience. Their only instinct is to hurt innocent people. So... Don't ever think you're just going to commit suicide and get out of this. Don't think God's just going to forgive you when you blow your brains out or take sleeping pills. You've got an accounting to make. You've got work to do to reprieve yourself. And in that lies the secret to defeating this evil. You will be so alive once you commit to good. Once you've proven yourself to God, once you've gone through adversity, as you've already gone through, and use that adversity, these were tests for you. You know you failed this round. You can, you can win the next round, but you've got to commit. Let's go to a phone call. Let's go to Aaron, then we'll go to Revolve. Uh, go ahead, you're on the air. Thanks for holding from Texas. 
Amen, Alex. My name's Aaron, and my pastor asked me yesterday what I was looking for in a pastor, and I told him I'm just looking for a fearless warrior of God who does not pussyfoot around with a 501c3 like James David Manning does. And I just want to invite you and your crew to our Abolish the IRS event. It's uh, t- this Saturday with uh, Joe Bannister, he's ex-IRS agent, Sherry Peel Jackson, and Tom Selgis. And I also wanted to mention Terry Lakin, who was court-martialed for and sentenced to six months in Fort Leavenworth for requesting the proof of uh, Obama's citizenship. You know, Mike Zulo from Sheriff Joe Arpaio's cold case posse, he'd be a great guest for your Prison Planet TV night. Uh, we, we've been, we, I think we tried to get him on. Let's try to get him on again. There's no doubt that the providence of Obama's a fraud. I want to say this about Pastor Manning. I think he has a lot of courage. A lot of people set up their church before they know about 501c3. The paperwork's all set. Everything's in that name. You would never. It's very hard to get it out of it. I don't want to judge people. I think we should judge the churches that are 501c3 and promote New World Order garbage. It's one thing if you're 501c3 and a government-run charity, but you really still tell the truth and ignore. I mean, they're, they're telling pro-life groups they have no free speech. I mean, th that's an illegal order. It's a fraud. Just everybody just needs to say no. And the churches are starting to do that. And I'm not slapping you down saying that about Pastor Manning, but I think, you know, Pastor Manning has a lot of courage. But I understand, you know, your point about uh, people. Uh, here, here's the issue. A church that knows this stuff and doesn't fight tyranny in, a, in 501c3 is terrible. But if you fight in tyranny and have to be 501c3, uh, then, you know, what's the issue? Because in on paper, you're a government church, but in spirit, you're not. Whereas, you know, a lot of these churches act like there's some that aren't 501c3 that act like on paper they're not a government church, but they really are. I mean, I mean, really, God judges the heart, not uh, not the paperwork. You know what I mean? Right. And he, he has a 501c3, but he knows he has a First Amendment, too. I hear you. Well, I bet if people give him enough financial support to make the transfer over and do all that and, uh, you know, have half the money he's got cut away from him because they'll start not letting it be tax exempt. I mean, you know, the guy feeds hundreds of kids every day. Uh, there in Harlem, and so uh, th th again, there's the, the, uh, churches shouldn't have to pay taxes anyways. Why do you have to become a government charity to do it? Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. The bigger issue is we let the criminal IRS go around and shake down preachers that won't go under their government control, forcing them into a contract. It's like the mafia going, sign this paper or I'll shut your church down. It, it, it's our fault. My fault for letting the criminals do that. So I stand up against those criminals. God bless you. I hear your point and hope people come to your rally. All right, we're going to go to Revolve, or Revol, I think is how you say it, on the other side. Then we're going to go to Jared and Damon and JB. And I've got to get to all this other news. So I'm going to overdrive. I haven't gotten into the audio of the bureaucrats. says water complaints could be an act of terrorism. Police busting into people's houses over uncut grass. Uh, I've got a bunch of other news about political correctness gone crazy. It's all coming up. I'm Alex Jones, your host, InfoWars.com. I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cyst, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. Revol, I think, in Pennsylvania, you've been holding patiently. Uh, what are you calling about today? Hello? Yes, uh, welcome. You're on the air. Hi, my name is Revel, not Revel. I'm revolution. sorry. <laughs> Revel, um, got it. Yeah, yeah, Revel. Um... Okay, what you were talking about before where people, rather than commit suicide, they should um, find something to stand up 
for, like like work in the societies. And my story that I want to tell you about made me realize that there's a silhouette that I don't think anybody's acknowledging um, enough, the responsibility of the individual towns and cities. Because um, the, New, the New World Order definitely are yeah, winning, overtaking us, and we need to stand up. But we also need to come together as as communities, because if we don't, which what they're doing is they're going to divide us. They've been dividing us, but they're going to do it more and more because they don't want us standing together, right? I agree. Tell so us this, what happened. Well, this leads to a touchy subject of racism. Okay, I live in a small town. We have one taxi to tell you how small it is. And the reason I choose small towns to live in is because I don't want to deal with crime, and I figure there's limited crime in a small town. I go, to the, I go to the store, I call a taxi, I live two miles outside of town, I'm going to the store, I go to the store, I come back with the taxi, on the way back, and I couldn't even believe this was happening, 15 kids, teenage black kids, just bombarded our van, that, the taxi van that I was in. Just overtook it, one kid stood right in front of the van, pointed right at us as if, you know, like, you ain't going nowhere until I move. And, and then, then I, I get out with a handgun and... Um, anybody physically assaults me, it's their, people are going to get shot. Yeah, See, that's why the system doesn't want the Second Amendment. Yeah, that's happening all over the country because they have promoted such incredible reverse racism. See, political correctness, they used white racism in certain areas to dominate and have tyranny. But when white Christians mainly got up and said no to it, like Charlton Heston, then they flipped and went, okay, but still they use the race game, Democratic Party. And it is promoted in a lot of rap and hip hop, it's it's in the news to go out and kill a white person. You know, they've had the uh, black uh, group down in Houston uh, come out and say, you know, don't mug in the black area, go kill whites. And 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 so it's a sacrament now to do that, uh, and it's a religion, uh, and and it's terrible. This is being done on purpose. And 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 I've seen articles in the news where the paper goes. After the third attack, we're forced to report, and we apologize. But nine black youths uh, attacked our reporters, and blah blah blah, or so and such. And it's like we're so sorry. And you notice the media, whenever they won't say the race of a person attacking, that means they were black or Hispanic, because they can only say the race if it's a white person. And that's done to keep the attacks going. And these kids think it's good to attack a white person because you're inherently a bad person. And and, and again, it's wrong when groups of white youth would get together. Uh, 60, 70 years ago or whatever, still happens. I, I mean, take the, the the Klan guys that drugged a black guy to death in Texas. Then uh, a year later, a black, a, a white guy was going down the road and some blacks drug him to death. That didn't even make news. In fact, the news said, we will not cover this. And they did it because we're getting you back as if the white wino knew anything about it. And it was the same thing. They killed the black wino. And then they killed a white wino, but the black wino mattered, the white wino didn't. Because you can't have it. Racism can only be white. So so how did this end? Well, he jumped out of the van. When, well, we, we started driving away. Okay, so what happened? They started throwing rocks at us. They threw over 30 rocks at our van. Yeah, well, anybody gets in front of my car throwing rocks, they're going to get run over. So, I mean, look, this is going to happen. Whites, on average, are the most cowardly, pathetic, politically correct people. Uh, you were supposed to just crap on yourselves and beg people to slit your throats. That would have proven you were politically correct. You should have got out, stabbed yourself in the throat, saying, I'm bad, I'm bad. That would have been the right thing to do. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now, that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com.
Ladies and gentlemen, the NFL promotes anti-gun garbage. Now they're going to promote Obamacare officially for the government. It is now the ultimate brainwashing tool. Boycott the NFL. Let them know. Knock it off. Jim Carrey pulls out of promoting his own movie over gun violence. I guess all those videos exposing what a hypocrite he is actually got to him. Well, good job, Carrie. Now, why don't you talk about all the military violence, you hypocrite? Instead of letting people protect themselves and defend themselves. I'm going to cover this on the nightly news tonight. Who's doing the news tonight? I think I'm going to shoot a special video on that. Wow, so much to get to. You know, there's a lot I haven't covered. I'll have to cover at the start of the show tomorrow. It, it's just amazing. But I think we've had an important broadcast so far. Let's talk to Jared in Texas. Jared, you're on the air. Uh, you're on the uh, air. What do you want to talk about? Hey, what's going on, Alex? Worldwide transmission. How's it going, Alex? Worldwide transmission. Hey, uh, I just want to talk, thing, talk to you about Dr. Stephen Greer. Have you heard of him? Uh, it rings a bell. Is he like Disclosure Project or something? Yes, there you go. Good, yeah. He actually, yeah, he, he funded that. Uh, he pretty much is the, the father of that. I really think you should have him on the show, man. The reason why is because he's actually on this in the in the same battle with you, just on a different front, because he's actually battling for the, the free energy devices that are out there that could, that could change the world as we know it. I mean, and not only that, I heard that there's other, I don't know if you heard of his, um, his um, documentary, Serious, but uh, you should really check out the trailer or check that out, because it, it has a lot of information about what I'm talking All about. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll check into it. Look, look I, I hear a lot of disinfo on the whole free energy movement. There's some real stuff out there, but then all the exaggeration hurts it. And then I also all this alien stuff. I've seen no proof of it. Uh, and I, I just can't even get people to admit there's an NSA, much less little green men. I mean, I talk about weather weapons existing because it's on record. And then they go, Alex says Obama sent the tornado. You know, it, 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 it's just that the, the public, I'm, I'm trying to just get them to wake up to the whole new world order takeover. But I hear you. We probably should get Greer on. I hear he's very interesting. Damien in Arizona. Go ahead. You're on the air. Yeah, how you doing, Alex? Um yeah, I'm calling to uh, discuss Jordan Elise, that's uh, Hastings' widow, and uh, Cenk Uger, which you had on from the Young Turks, Amber Lyon. Uh, they all sort of ran the same circles, and I was wondering if you'd be able to uh, have uh, Cenk on again to challenge Yeah, no, I told my four bookers, I got four people to go after guests, I said I'd like to get his wife on, and so I'm sure they've tried to contact her. Yeah, Jordan Elise is actually very interesting. You probably know this already, but uh, she used to be a staffer. Uh, she paid for uh, Condi Rice. But she was very, she has always been publicly very favorable to uh, Dr. Ron Paul. And she and uh, Hastings never said anything bad about Ron Paul publicly. They always supported his uh, foreign policy. Well, I mean, they look, she needs to come on this show or get on another show because they'll kill her too. Uh, and if she's got more evidence, they need to get it out. Uh, I mean, he was on the run when they killed him. And uh, a lot of times widows will get so scared by something that they'll shut up. But... Uh, absolutely, we need to get her on, and I'm told we're trying, trying to get her on. This might be slightly of a tipping point because it's clear now, beyond any shadow of a doubt, for sort of the you know quote unquote alternative media, they're they're targeting media personality right now. So I think Chuck Uger, who you had on, and you directly challenged him. I said, "Your your father, you know what's going on, but you're not willing to go that far." So look at this info. Your friend is dead now. So why wouldn't you? You know, and also I think you should do uh, one of those. Only you can do this, Alex. You do these uh, great culture jamming. Um, I think you should call up a Mercedes Benz, and his car was, I think, a 250 coupe, which is you know kind of like premier, you know, entry level car. To get them on record, call their engineering department and be like, listen, they're saying that your car is engine. Exactly, engine make an issue out of their exploding gas tanks because all the engineers are saying that's basically impossible, and then and then say, oh, exactly, make a controversy and make Mercedes come out. Well, you know, the big German insurer tried to not pay, uh, pay out on the collapse of the towers and looked at explosives, but was basically then paid off to shut up. So that's a great point. Yeah, absolutely. We need to call Mercedes-Benz. I got a whole room of reporters right here. Got report, a whole room of reporters down there. Uh, I, I got to go find a reporter and say, you do it. But we'll get on that. That is a great idea. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at infowars.com forward slash show.